Then just last week in Germany, you had an alternate political party basically transform the entire German political landscape such that we won't really have a Merkel power in Europe anymore. That new government will have to be put together on a coalition basis. And the AFD, which is the name of the party, the alternative for Deutschland, will be the opposition party. This is an altogether new reality. I'll predict here on your show today that next March we'll have a new nationalist government in Italy. freezing cold morning in 1776 in Philadelphia, a 47-page booklet was published that would go on to change world history. The publication was called Common Sense, and its author was Thomas Paine. The pamphlet contained clear truths, clear to all right-thinking rational persons, and the common sense uniting them into a useful whole. Like that powerful expression of American consciousness, today we need another jolt of common sense, this time in business. Today, responsible, purposeful business leaders are taking up this mantle and laying claim to the phrase common sense business. This book is about restoring faith in the market and wealth creation. It sets up a dramatic tension and then promises the reader a better way. The true secrets to enduring success. And it does it in real life using dramatic case study examples. Will you join all those who are showing us how, why, and where common sense business is being executed? More importantly, do you want to know how you can do it too? And that's the new book, already a bestseller, Common Sense Business, by our guest, Ted Malik. And again, Ted Malik's one of those names. I remember 20 years ago going, look at the globalist at the Aspen Institute. And look, he's one of the executive board of the World Economic Forum. But a lot of people have been in that system trying to promote Americana, trying to promote free market. And for over a decade, he's been one of the main leaders helping really uh, – expand the amount of people in the establishment you could say that realize the way globalism got set up is dead on arrival you've seen peter thiel and many others say the tide is going out on globalism because it was authoritarian it was crony capitalist it was centralized and it was greedy and wanted to create austerity for other groups and peoples to consolidate control to create a world of renters instead of a world of owners they could have ruled the world they were in the position to do it. They were already doing it, but they killed the golden goose. That's my perspective, but it's great to get Ted Malik on with us, tedmalik.com. I'm not going to go over his entire bio and all his best-selling books and top advisor to top companies and CEOs and, again, served as the uh, executive board of the World Economic Forum. That's the most important meeting in the world. I mean, it's like a public Bilderberg meeting. Bilderberg itself is, a, even according to Ted, is you know is is, is just a joke uh, these days. And of course, uh, he's been a senior policy position in the U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations in the U.S. State Department. I'm not going to go over his PhDs and all the books and the rest of it, uh, and how he is the uh, spiritual uh, enterprise. Uh, uh, research. He is a uh, research professor at Yale University. He also co-directs the project Practical Wisdom for Management for the uh, spiritual and philosophical traditions along with the... Uh, I'm not going to go over all the rest of it from Yale. The point is, he knows all the big kingpins and he's here telling you that globalism is falling apart. So, what are the globalists doing right now then? Trying to create racial division, trying to create divide and conquer, trying to kill nationalism that's springing up from Catalonia to the United States, from Brazil to uh, the Middle East. Why are they trying to kill organic free market awakening when that's what's always made us all wealthier, happier, uh, and better? I mean, they admit many of their elite publications they're losing and that there's a total reversal. So why are they doubling down or am I wrong? Well, it's great to be with you, Alex, and to see you even from over here across the ocean. Uh, I wish I could be with you physically in Texas, but this is the next best thing, technology and the wonders yes. of technology. You are so right, so spot on. I said 
you know, a few months ago that Davos man is dead. He's certainly dying, and we have to put some nails in that coffin. Peter Thiel, who you mentioned, says the tide of globalism is going out. So you see all over the world, and I, I was really excited about Trump's speech at the UN, where he talked about national sovereignty literally, I think, 17 times in that one speech. The world is moving back. The pendulum is swinging back to free peoples and to the nations in which they participate. Wow. So from your own words, instead of me asking my obnoxious questions, where are we historically? How did we get there? Where are we going? Who are the players? Uh, uh, what's this going to look like? Well, I think we're in the throes of the storm. So by no means is this a determined uh, you know, reality. We, we don't have the next world yet. I think we're in a throw of great change. So you saw Brexit first as a, a barometer event, and Nigel has been on your show. Of course, he's a very good friend of mine. That's Nigel Farage, recently in Alabama, celebrating another victory there. But uh, so you had that swing in Britain, and then soon thereafter, you had the, at least from some perspectives, the unbelievable and unexpected election of Donald J. Trump as president of the United States. And then you had a number of elections in Europe where these nationalist parties did as well or better than many people expected. And just last week in Germany, you had an alternate political party basically transform the entire German political landscape such that we won't really have a Merkel power in Europe anymore. That new government will have to be put together on a coalition basis. And the AFD, which is the name of the party, the alternative for Deutschland, will be the opposition party. This is an altogether new reality. I'll predict here on your show today that next March we'll have a new nationalist government in Italy. Wow. And again, our media spun it, corporate media spun it, that it was another win for Merkel. But right there, if you look at the demographics and you look at the numbers of a parliamentary system, I know most our audience understands that, but you might explain to them that uh, once you know she becomes fractional, now uh, other fractional parties uh, can now basically dictate a lot of change. So this is the beginning of the end of the current wave of, I, I would say, anti-Europe, anti-West, uh, really communists that have been running the EU. Well, we don't know what will happen in the EU yet. I think that... But don't you think if Germany starts falling to nationalism uh, and free market again, won't that signal the whole EU? Well, one can only keep their fingers crossed and hope that's the case. So we have in France someone who wants to double down on the EU bet, and certainly Merkel would have been his logical and likely partner to uh, basically reintegrate the European countries to bring forward those institutions and make it not just a trading club, but a political entity threatening America on every front, by the way. That's less likely to happen today after the election in Germany, because she's going to be focused really on keeping Germany together and putting her coalition together. Exactly, not selling Germany out difficult. to prop up the euro, not selling Germany out to keep this failed deal. And so failing forward, the EU, you might tell folks, because uh, you're the expert on it, falling apart. So now it wants an EU army, total control. Its answer to people trying to pull out of it is police state, just like Catalonia, but on a bigger scale, correct? Absolutely. Uh, just a week and a half ago, we had the president, Jan uh, Claude Juncker, give a speech in Brussels where he basically gave his scenario for the future, which is a totally unified, totally integrated, totally statist, uh, anti-capitalist, pro-socialist Europe uh, with, with an even closer unification than it has today. And clearly that is not something that certain players in Europe, like Poland, possibly Spain, and most certainly the UK, which thankfully has voted to leave the European Union wants to suffice. So we have, we're going through the throes of the Brexit now and the negotiations, and the EU is being very punitive against our ally, the United Kingdom. So as they try to extricate themselves from this union, it's looking very difficult, very costly, and of course there are many remainers still in the UK. What did you make of the arrogant Juncker, a literal top Nazi heir, 
uh, whose family took over Luxembourg. I mean, he, he still has these duchies that he controls. Uh, he, he's, this, he's this fossil, this throwback to something even beyond uh, – royalty but, but but just a kleptocratic family that, that that's been perched on europe for centuries and then he threatens trump threatens america and s makes statements about how the eu with communist china uh will be able to stop america's recovery and get trump back in line dictating to us like he'd, he'd already captured us like his uh like his grandfather and father captured luxembourg i mean this is a guy that really thinks he owns the world well, he is the crony of the Germans and of Mrs. Merkel. So in, in a sense, this whole cabal in Europe is a German conspiracy. I have uh, some difficulty saying this, but it is almost like uh, Germany has gained through the EU what it couldn't obtain in the Second World War. So they're controlling Europe, they're controlling the, uh, the currency, they're controlling the institutions. Juncker is a, is a crony of Merkel, and basically it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's, it's an organization that works to benefit Germany and its, its interests, which are not the same interests, obviously, of other nation states in Europe. And most certainly, and I say this, uh, of course, as somebody who has been close to this uh, over the last uh, number of years, not something that the Americans should take lightly. We should look at this EU as a real challenger and not just as a benign friend. Sure, it sure. And, and, and actually a challenger. And people overuse the Nazi thing, but Juncker really is the heir to the, like the second most powerful family in Germany during World War II, top Nazis, the Junker aircraft that, you know, bombed England and Russia and everything else were made by his family. And, and he really is bringing forward a EU project that it's been declassified, as you know, was a Nazi program. They wanted a European Union, so uh, they're just he's just carrying on the family project, second most powerful family, arguably the most powerful uh, Nazi family in World War II, and they run the EU, folks. I mean, he basically thinks he owns Europe, he thinks he owns America, and this is the type of scum that we're facing. But we have patriots, like our guest, from the inside that are dynamiting it. Ted Malik, tedmalik.com is our guest. He's got a new book out we're going to talk about coming up in the next segment. And if you want to talk to somebody that's been at the highest levels of the Davos group, somebody that knows all the big world leaders, knows what the globalist plan was, and from the inside has been opposing it for over a decade, Ted's the guy to talk to. And it's just fascinating. We should have him on for like three hours someday if that doesn't exhaust him. But this is your short segment. What hits me so hard is for decades, going back to Barry Goldwater and Ron Paul and myself and many others, they would make jokes like there's no globalism, there's no new world order while they were teaching it at colleges, while they were preparing it. And, that, and now that hoax has collapsed. And as soon as that hoax collapsed, it's game over. But if they would have just been building a real global community with a future to empower everybody, everyone would be for it because that's obviously the logical you know, next step. And I just don't get that they're doubling down with violence and with Marxists in Europe and here and calling for violence and calling everyone Nazis uh, that doesn't want to be part of this when literal Nazis launch their current EU-centric uh, spoke to control globalism. So bottom line, there's a fight over who controls globalism. There's globalism, the economy that exists already. Then there's globalist, uh, you know, two separate things in my view, but... It's just such an amazing time to be alive and, and to realize, as you said, this is the beginning of the renaissance or the break away from it. I guess my question or my rant is this, can they still defeat us? Are we being arrogant about the total tide shift? What are they planning from your best research? Well, I, I don't think they're sitting on their hands. I think they have every intention to try to defeat us. You see that uh, on the streets, you see that in the media, you see that in certain corporations who are captive to these globalists. So I don't think by any means they're going to go away, as Steve Bannon says, without putting up a fight. So we have to be equally adept in actual street fighters and take them on. And I think that we've been doing that, and it scares the bejesus out of them. Okay, I've been asking the questions. We've got a few minutes left in this segment. We'll get into your book in the next. But what else is big on your radar as we see the collapse the 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 capsizing of globalism well i i think that you you see them trying to take over all the institutions of course uh of our civic life uh, whether it's the schools whether it's the culture whether it's the media 
I uh, obviously spend most of my time with corporations as a corporate strategist. They've actually had an attempt over the last 20 odd years to have globalists as CEOs of all these companies or many of these companies, such that they then have transnational corporations who have no attention then to the places where they do business. They're bigger and stronger and in their views better than the people who inhabit those places. So really a corporate coup through corporate governance, but not to even empower free market. What would you call the system they were building? Kind of a technocracy where they're exempt from the socialist hell they put us under? <laughs> well, they are elitist in every sense. And some of the rules that they make, they don't want to be bound by themselves, a little bit like the U.S. Congress. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, they've built a system where they can fly around on their private jets and at the same time talk about climate change, and at the same time basically form a kind of crony capitalism, pretending to be philanthropists, giving away other people's money. So it's a, it's a, it's a very nice uh, lifestyle. Basically, they're a bunch of crooks that have bought off the establishment media and build themselves as, as angels. And that's why people like you, Alex, are so dangerous, because you expose this. You and Drudge and all the other people on this side of the equation and people who are, in fact, trying to defend free market capitalism, those people actually have to continue to make this case. And we have to, and I think there are more ears listening to what you're saying day in and day out. Common sense business. We're going to break, but I certainly want to read this book. Just in 40 seconds, why have you become... Well, in, the, in the last 30 years behind the scenes, one of the top corporate advisors in the world? Well, I'd like to think that I'm trusted by people with some analytical capacity, some good character, and some ideas that actually have come to fruition. But I, you know, I frankly have had the good luck and good fortune to be at the right place at the right time, and I've had very good mentors, and I would like to say God has been on my side. I certainly don't want to be on the side the globalists are on. What a sad group of people. Boy, I tell you, we're going to talk about it all. The book, take a few of your phone calls with Mr. Malik straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. We'll be right back. In ancient times, man roamed the earth in a constant state of hunting or being hunted. Introducing Caveman, where cutting edge science meets ancient super nutrients. Secure your bottle right now at InfoWarsStore.com.